Why do you think women remain underrepresented in scientific leadership positions? There are a number of reasons and we're going to have to address all of them. So it seems pretty clear that there is an intrinsic bias against the appointment of women in senior scientific positions. And that bias from the studies that have been done seems to be applied both to men who are making these decisions about appointments in senior scientific positions and women who are making those appointments. So there is something in the way that people who are appointing at those science, senior scientific positions, their expectations, what they want of the scientists, seems to be intrinsically biased against women. So that's one problem. The second problem is that for many women, in the period of time that they're building their scientific careers, they have other demands being made on them. Demands usually relating to family, demands relating to children, and that can mean that at a particular stage in a scientific career, a woman may have less to show for her years in science than a man who spent an equivalent amount of time. And the third problem is that it seems to be the case that women overall don't perceive themselves as having the qualities that are necessary for becoming senior scientists. So we know that from the recruitments that we're doing here at Sanger, that when it comes to recruiting for PhD students or for postdocs, it's more or less 50-50 men-women. In fact, there is probably more women than men. But the moment that one moves to faculty, to senior scientific positions, then the proportion of women who are applying for the positions drops very, very dramatically down to about 20 to 30 percent, if not lower. And this seems to be because women themselves are thinking that they do not have what is suitable in order to be a scientific leader. So you put all those three things together, there are a lot of factors mitigating against women making it into those senior scientific positions. What actions could the Sanger Institute take to ensure gender equality and encourage women in science? Actually, when it comes down to it, I think we can do quite a large number of things, but with the recognition that each of them may have only a small effect, but with the hope that a large number of small effects will make a substantial contribution to encouraging women to work more and achieve more and become senior scientists. So at the point of applying for jobs, I think that we need to be thinking here as we make shortlists for jobs, as we decide who we're going to interview, who we're going to appoint, we need to take into account the fact that this person is a woman and may have had other demands on her time during the period in which she was putting together the work for this CV. So that's what we can do at the time of, uh, of recruitment. I think we can, and we have been doing in these discussions that we've been having in sex and science, that's been part of the process. There's been a really tremendous amount of uh, raising of consciousness amongst people at Sanger, but I would have to say amongst the senior management in Sanger about the issues that uh, uh, are confronting women who are trying to make careers in science. So continuing that conversation is a very important thing. But I really think that we need to put in place and focus on the mentorship side of things. We need to understand that for many women the notion of becoming senior scientists is not one that they conceive of for themselves. We need to encourage them to apply for the jobs and to apply for them with not so much with the confidence they're going to get them, because frankly none of us have that confidence, but with the confidence that they, it's perfectly reasonable for them to be applying for those jobs. And the mentorship need not be a very, you know, a very heavy duty, long process. We know from the experiences of women here on the Sanger faculty that the things that have changed their life have been single sentences. Someone being told, well, if you don't apply for that job, you're never going to get it. As simple as that, you know, that sense that actually it's perfectly reasonable for you to apply for the job and what do you lose?
So Mike made three very interesting and important points in his talk. The first one is how the Institute is trying to attract women and to make sure that the review process of their careers is not biased. The second one is how the Institute tries to make sure women can conjugate their career and their family life. And the third one is one that I've never seen tackled in talks like this before, is how the way we present science and the projects that are carried out at the Institute might be of putting to women because they are presented in a very brutal fashion. And I thought it was really thinking outside of the box and it was a very interesting point.